بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وی ول کنٹینیو آور ڈسکشن ریگارڈنگ دی ٹریٹمنٹ آف کرانک سپوریٹیوٹائٹس میڈیا ایٹیکوینٹرل ٹائپ سو مینلی دا ٹریٹمنٹ فار ایٹیکوینٹرل ٹائپ از سرجری اینڈ وٹ آر دا ڈفرینٹ سرجیکل پروسیجرس اویلیبل وی ول ڈیفائن دوز سرجیکل پروسیجرس اینڈ دیر انڈیکیشنس اینڈ I have a demonstrating video also, so that will be helpful for you at the end. So let's start the discussion. So atequental type, as we know, it is a unsafe disease due to the chances of complications more with this disease. So the treatment is surgery for that. So, uh, in the previous discussion, the link for which there is in the description box, you can check it out there. We know that mastoid explorations or mastoid surgeries, these are divided into main groups. One is canal wall up procedures and the other one is canal wall down procedures. So, by canal wall up procedure means that the posterior meatal wall remains intact in canal wall up procedures and one of them is the cortical mastoidectomy. It is also called as simple mastoidectomy or Schwartz mastoidectomy. It is complete excentration of all the accessible mastoid air cells and converting them into a single cavity. We know that normally the mastoid air cell system is honeycomb type and there is partition, bony partitions in between these cells. So basically this is uh, to remove those uh, bony partitions and convert this honeycomb into a single cavity and here Posterior meatal wall is left intact and middle ear structures are not disturbed. So that's why this is called as canal wall up procedure. In contrast, radical mastoidectomy as the name indicates as well that this is a radical procedure and this is a canal wall down procedure. This is an operation in to eradicate the disease of the middle ear and the mastoid without any attempt to reconstruct the hearing because Uh, primarily the objective of all these surgeries is to make the ear safe. So this radical mastectomy, it was directed towards achieving that goal of making the ear safe. So there was no attempt to reconstruct the hearing. Posterior meatal wall, here it is removed and the entire area of middle ear, attic, antrum and mastoid, they are exteriorized through the external auditory canal and converted into a single cavity. All the remnants of the tympanic membrane, ossicles, except stapes foot plate, corda tympani and mucoperiosteal lining of the middle ear cleft are removed. Eustachian tube is obliterated by a piece of muscle or cartilage because there is no attempt on reconstruction of hearing so eustachian tube is no more required so that's why it is obliterated permanently in radical mastectomy but now as you know now from last uh, many decades now all kinds of surgeries they are more conservative now as compared to radical surgeries so same applies here in ear surgery as well so now we have come up with what we call as a modified radical mastoidectomy. Again, this is an operation to eradicate the disease of the attic and mastoid. That is a primary objective, of course, which cannot be compromised. And these are exteriorized into external auditory canal by removal of posterior meatal and lateral attic walls. So up till this, this is the same as we do in radical mastoidectomy. But here, with preservation of hearing mechanism, so, here you can see that uh, all remnants of tympanic membrane, they are removed. All the ossicles except foot plate of stapes, they are removed whether they are affected by the disease or not. But here we preserve this hearing mechanism whichever is available. So, tympanic membrane remnant, whatever it is functioning ossicles and reversible mucosa they are not removed rather they are retained 
So this is the modification from that typical or classical radical mastoidectomy. And basically, when all these structures are being retained and we have the goal of preserving the hair mechanism in the same sitting or later on, so we will need the eustachian tube. So eustachian tube is not obliterated in modified radical mastoidectomy. These structures are necessary to reconstruct the hearing mechanism at time of surgery or in a second stage operation. So primary aim, again I am reiterating, is to remove the disease and to make the ear safe. Secondary aim is to preserve or reconstruct the hearing. Canal wall down procedures, there is mastoid cavity which is very open. Disease area is fully exteriorized into the external auditory canal. Aticotomy, modified radical mastoidectomy or radical mastoidectomy, these are the canal wall down procedures. In contrast, canal wall up procedures, we can approach by meatus or the mastoid but retain the posterior bony meter wall intact. And in dry years, it permits easy reconstruction of hearing mechanism. So these are the differences between canal wall up and canal wall down procedures. Meatus is normal appearance in canal wall up, while in canal wall down there is no posterior meter wall, so we can approach the mastoid cavity backward and straight the middle ear cavity. Dependence, it does not require regular cleaning, while in canal wall down, that depends upon the doctor for cleaning the mastoid cavity once or twice a year. Recurrence rate is low in case of canal wall down, it is high in case of canal wall up. Second look surgery, in canal wall up it is required. Patients limitations, there is no limitation in canal wall up, but in canal wall down while swimming, there is chances of infection of the mastoid cavity. Auditory rehabilitation, it is easy if hearing aid is required, but problem is fitting in the uh, hearing aid due to large meatus and infected mastoid cavity in canal wall down procedures. This is the uh, diagrammatic uh, picture on the operation table that this is the this is external auditory canal and this is the posterior meter wall which has been removed so that this mastoid cavity now it is connected with the external auditory canal and there it is the deep uh, this middle ear cavity and this is the cholesteatoma sac in the mastoid cavity this is sigmoid sinus and this is the skull So modified radical mastoidectomy indications includes cholesteatoma involving the mastoid ear cells of course then cholesteatoma in only hearing ear, recurrence of cholesteatoma after closed cavity procedures that is canal wall up procedures, unreconstructable posterior canal wall, pathological or CNS complications and poor eustachial tube function. In radical mastoidectomy the indications are when unresectable cholesteatoma extending down to eustachian tube or into the petrous apex, promontory cochlear fistula, perilabyrinthine cholesteatoma that cannot be removed and must be cleaned or inspected periodically, and temporal bone neoplasm. Very limited role for conservative treatment for cholesteatoma. Only if cholesteatoma is very small, easily accessible to suction clearance under the microscope when there is very shallow retraction pocket in pars placida. Elderly patients who are unfit for general anesthesia or they refuse the surgery, then polyps, granulation tissues, cup forceps, with the cup forceps you can remove them or cauterize them with chemical agents like silver nitrate and trichloroacetic acid and oral toilet by dry ear precautions regularly. So this is post auricular incision given.
So this is tangent in pen I basically. Sigmoid sinus. Here the posterior meter wall is removed. So this is now canal wall down procedure. And this is the conclusion for our all discussions. That is the basic difference between tubotympanic type and atequentral. Tubotympanic, now you have very clear idea that there is profuse mucoid odorless discharge. In contrast, in atequentral type, there will be foul smelling, purulent, scanty discharge. Perforation is central in tubotympanic. In atequentral, it is either attic or postosterior marginal perforation. Granulations are uncommon in tubotympanic. These are very common in atequentral. Polyp, if present in tubotympanic, will be pale, while it will be red and fleshy in case of atequentral. Plasteotoma is present in atequentral type with complication rate very high. In atequentral, audiogram will show mild to moderate conductive hearing loss in tubotympanic, while it be conductive or even mixed in case of atequentral type of the disease. So, thank you very much. Now, I leave you with some MCQs regarding this, so you can assess yourselves, and uh, I will welcome to see your answers there in the comment section as well. So features indicative of safe otitis media. Safe otitis media are the tubotympanic type of superative otitis media is scanty foul smelling discharge, attic perforation, past tense of perforation, or postosterior marginal perforation. First priority of mastoid cavity mastoid surgery in chronic superative otitis media is making the ear dry, improvement in hearing, preservation of hearing rendering the ear safe. Editus connects the mastoid antrum to middle ear through which wall? Tensor tympani muscle comes from which wall of the tympanic cavity? Main pathological findings in chronic superator otitis media atequental type include Histological findings in cholesterol granuloma include So if you found that this is beneficial for you, please like and share with your friends and subscribe the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.